Twilio Studio is a visual editor for creating Twilio applications. It works by dragging and dropping widgets that represent parts of the Twilio API and then connecting them together to create an application. If you can draw your application, chances are you can build it with Twilio Studio. Let's take a look at what a simple SMS survey would look like if we drew it on a chalkboard. First, we draw that a REST request triggers the survey. Then we draw that the first question is about rating the session from 1 to 10. Then our second question would be to rate the workshop from 1 to 10. Then perhaps we'd draw that we'd ask a third question that asks for any additional feedback. Once we have all three questions asked, then we would log the results to our web server. If either of the first or second question didn't contain a response that was between 1 to 10, we'd give the user a second chance to try it, since that's an invalid choice. All of this stuff exists in Studio, and it's really easy to build. In fact, that's what we're going to build in this video. We'll start inside of Twilio Studio and create a new flow. I'm going to name this Simple Survey. You can name it whatever you want, but we'll start with an empty flow. This is going to be triggered by a REST request, so that REST API URL will be important later. To get our first question answered, we'll use the send and wait for reply widget that sends an SMS and then waits for the user to respond. We'll name it first question and we'll say on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate today's session overall? Excellent. We'll give that a save and this is going to be the first thing that happens when the REST API is triggered, so we'll make that connection. When the user replies, we're going to want to evaluate their response. We can use the split based on widget to check any property and make a branch based on what they did. Uh, we're going to use the inbound body of the text message that they reply with to check and see if it's between 1 to 10. The split based on can use a regular expression to check for complex values. We're going to use a regular expression that allows us to punch in 1, 2, 3, or 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, or 10. Now, that looks really complex in the conditions list, so we're going to punch that up in a second and make it look a little nicer. But we need to add our second question widget first so that we can do that. So we'll save it, and we'll come back to this transition. We want to say that we're going to move to the second question widget, and that allows us to name this transition. We'll name it 1 to 10, just so it's easier to look at in our flow. Excellent. So on 1 to 10, we'll go to this second question. And our second question is, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely are you to recommend this workshop to a friend? Uh, awesome. So we're doing an NPS score there. So now that we've asked the second question, we're going to use this regular expression again. So let's copy it and take it down here to the next split. So we're going to split based on the response to the second question. So we'll call this check response two. Now be careful when you check this variable to test drop down because you're going to have first question here and we're interested in second question. So we'll go second question down to the body so we can check that text message. We'll create our condition again and it'll be the regular expression that we just copied, paste that in. Uh, and we need to create a new widget so we can name this, this transition. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be another send and wait for reply for the third question. Uh, and then we can alter this transition to be named a little nicer. So we'll set where that this transition is going to go to. It's going to be to the third question and we'll name it one to 10 and save it. Okay, let's rename this because it's send and reply three right now instead of third question. And then the third question's text is going to be, uh, is there any other feedback? So just a general purpose question. Here, we don't care whether they reply or not. This is an optional question. So we're going to end up hooking up the reply and no reply to this response. Uh, as this is the final question, though, uh, we can log our results, results back to our server. Now, we could use uh, HTTP request or like I'm going to use, I'm going to use a Twilio function. So I created a Twilio function that's just going to log the question results so that we can see whether it worked or not later. So that's going to be the send survey result function. And we're going to pass in parameters. So we're going to pass in the the results of each of these questions. So that's going to be the inbound body of the first question, the second question, and the third question. And this uses the liquid syntax where we have widgets dot name of widget dot properties. So we're doing widgets dot second question dot inbound dot body. Once you've typed enough, you can select it. And then you click the add button to add it. So question one, question two, question three, widgets dot third question dot inbound dot body. And that's going to pass those three parameters into the Twilio function that I'm calling here, uh, which will allow me to log out the results. Now, as I said, we're going to connect the reply and no reply since this is an optional question. It will time out after a bit of time uh, and then log 
even if they don't answer that question. Now, what about these cases where, oh, look, we forgot to hook up the, we hook, forgot to hook up the reply for the second question to lead to the second response. Okay. What about these cases where they send something in that doesn't match? Well, we want to send a text message back to them to let them know that they didn't send a value that was between 1 to 10, so they should try again. So we'll do this unknown answer 1 here and say, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Please try again. Uh, we need a number between 1 to 10. So what we're going to do is hook up the, the check on response 1, the no matches from check response 1 to this widget. And then once that's sent, we'll loop them back around to the first question to ask it again. And now we'll do the same thing for response two. We want to hook up the no matches to the send message, uh, check message, uh, unknown answer. So here we'll say again, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Please enter a number from one to 10. We'll hook up no matches to our unknown answer. And once that's sent, we'll loop back to the second question and save that out. And this is our whole flow. This matches up very nicely to what we drew on the chalkboard. It's a linear path from first question, check the response. Uh, that gives us our unknown answer off to the side that we had. Uh, I believe it was invalid choice on the chalkboard, if you remember. Uh, and then second question does the same thing. We'll check it, make sure it's between 1 to 10. If it's not, we loop back through. We ask a third question, and whether they answer it or not, we run a Twilio function that logs the results, which we'll check when we run it copy this REST API URL and take it over to the terminal where we're gonna use curl to make a post request to that URL. And then pass in some parameters. We need a two phone number. That's gonna be my cell phone number, which I have stored for safekeeping inside of environment variables. And then we need a from number and that's just the Twilio number we just purchased. Next, you'll need a Twilio account sit in Twilio auth token that you can find in the Twilio console and then tuck away into environment variables as I've done here. Once we send this, I'll get a text message on my phone that asks the first question. I'll respond with foo, which is not one to 10. So we get the, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Please try again, and we'll punch in nine. Okay, second question comes in about the workshop. I think I'll say 11 instead of 10, just so we trigger the exception case there as well. And as you can see, it worked. We'll send a 10, and then we'll get the feedback question. I'll just say, this is great. And once we've sent our third response, if we head over to Twilio functions and take a look at the send survey result, we'll see down at the bottom that it's logged our responses, nine, 10, and this is great. That's all there is to it, two simple SMS surveys. Uh, really, we've just scratched the surface of what you can do with Twilio Studio. So please play around and extend this example, build something, leave us a comment, and we'll check it out.